welcome back everyone uh, as you know this video is entitled the retracts and I decided that I would get a little bit of a head start and get one done because I'm the type of guy who uh, gets an idea just slaps it together without any type of structure uh, no steps one two three four nothing like that so the hard part for me was to break it down into steps so I can show you exactly what I'm doing and that's why I did this one first so I could lay out um, a method to the madness as you know I on this side we started out and I showed you how to uh, put the main main landing gear in and I cut the slot out and stuff and usually when I do retracts when it's still the bare core that's when I get everything set up for the retracts the coal, holes will be cut things like that but I wanted to show the landing gear going in as the kit shows it so it kind of changes things a little bit so I had to do it afterwards and it makes it look like an afterthought so I figured out a way to do this so it's easy to understand and follow along and um, it's kind of shooting off the hip in a way so let me move my coffee cup and demonstrate this wing for you a little bit I'm gonna zoom in and uh, show you how it how it works well, now that we're zoomed in you can see it's a really inexpensive pair of retracts um, well singular retract and what I have on here is a craft wheel I got a rod that's stuck or something here there we go it's an old craft wheel that I like using. Uh, you can see that I cut out the wheel well. And this right here is the landing gear slot where the block goes. I just use that for the slot where the rod will travel. So that makes that pretty easy. I made a little wooden cover to cover it up. A little piece of wood over here to cover up the foam. And the wheel well liner itself is made out of this material. And this is a drafting mylar. It's double matted side, but it's easy to manipulate. You can make it into a circle and glue it. And that's basically what I did for the wheel well. When I fiberglass, the fiberglass is going to go over this and you won't have to worry about it coming off or anything like that. It, it's pretty. It's stuck in there quite well. So there's not really a whole, much, whole bunch to tell you about that. And then the rod travels right here. It's going to have a bend in it, so it travels closer to the bottom of the well, or the top of the wheel well in this case when it's flipped over. And everything fits just like that. So I'm going to show you the procedures I used to cut this one and uh, pretty much uh, explain everything I do. So uh, let's get started. The wing is uh, sitting on a couple rolls of paper towels just to keep it from getting bruised up from the bench. Oh, there's a strip of mylar that I'm going to use for the wheel well. The other retract. This is a uh, eighth inch sheet of leftover balsa scrap that I'm going to use to cut out the bottom of the wheel well or top of the wheel well, whichever way you want to put it. And what we mount the gear on itself is a plate. This is quarter inch plywood. In this case, it's not really quarter inch. This is two sheets of eighth because I ran out of quarter. And I glue them together and squared them up. And drawn on here is the outline of the retrack itself. You can see that this is the outside, screw holes. This is the center part, a couple notches for the bolts. So you slide through. And I'll probably have to add one more notch in the center because the cam in here kind of sticks out a little bit and will hang up trying to get it in and out so that is another thing and the bearing for the retract 
where it rotates sticks out so I have to cut a hole in there or a slot for that also somewhere in this block doesn't matter where as long as they're straight across from each other and this will be sitting out here I'll have to cut into the foam and recess this down and it's only going to be less than a sixteenth inch inserted into the foam but now maybe a little more because the depth of this uh, aluminum on the retract and first off I got to uh, cut the slot out where the landing gear block was supposed to go and clean that out and then we'll start insetting this piece so uh, you see me cut the slot out on this side earlier in a different in another video so I'm not going to show that I'm just going to cut it out and then we'll go from there be right back the first thing we're going to do is center the block with the landing gear uh, cut out you can see I cut the slot out for what used to be the block and I've already centered it up and drew my lines but you want to center this block up and you can see I put a center line on on this uh, quarter inch piece and center that over the hole draw your lines and then you're going to take a knife and this is just a scalpel and what I did since 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 this is going to be a depth cut I measured down on my blade and wrapped a piece of tape on it for the depth so when I cut into this it's going to be just the right depth for the plywood and the depth of the retract like that and you probably won't be able to see this but when the tape rests against that the point is at the bottom of the plywood and what I'm going to do is keep my blade as straight up and down as possible and as straight as possible I'll probably use a ruler to make the first initial cuts and then uh, I'll notch the rest of it out. So let me get a uh, better can. Let me get a better camera angle for you, and I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Lining up my ruler to for the first cut, and I'm not going to go ex um, as deep as I should. This is just to cut through the top layer of balsa. Last cut. All right. Now, when I do the depth cut, I just shove the knife straight down 90 degrees until it touches the tape. About like that. And just kind of bounce it up and down. You can draw it, whatever you want to do. Draw the knife. But I think this way works better. Seems to for me. I don't know. Maybe you have a better way of doing it. it takes a little time, but you have to have patience. It's not a race, it's a hobby. On to the next side. This is really easy to cut, by the way. 
If you cut too fast, you could make a mistake. I kind of, I kind of like taking it a little slow, just to get it where I want it, and not having to correct any errors I might have made. That takes care of the first part. Now that the depth is cut, I'm gonna remove some of the foam and some of the balsa. Just take a knife and run it in on an angle. I usually start at the top or the bottom of the top sheet. You can see that I'm, let me get so you can tell what I'm doing. I'm right at the bottom of the balsa. Stick my knife in on an angle, not too much of one and just cut it all the way to the other side. And just kind of pop that out. And you can tell I wasn't quite all the way to the other side. That cleans up pretty easily. Okay, do the opposite side. a little bit of cleanup to do here. All right, what I like doing is taking my piece, and I'll kind of sit it in here and see what my depth is. You can see it's, it's very close. It might be just a little bit high yet, but when I level this foam here, it should take care of that. And to level the foam is not an easy task either. What I do is I just lay my knife down and just start trimming it. Just just on the high spot. And just flatten it out the best you can. Whatever mistakes you make in your cut is easy to remedy because you're using five minute epoxy and wherever it flows, it'll, it'll take up any kind of uh, gap you happen to have. Just make sure you have enough epoxy to do that. Kind of hard doing it from this side. Okay, test fit, what I do with my plywood, there it is. And it looks like I might have to shave a little bit off of this front edge. So what I'll do is I'll just run the knife next to the plywood, like that. And cut just a sliver off, see I had to do a little guy right there is enough to hold you up. Okay, it's a little high over here, won't sit flush. Keep on going, trim her up some more. Well, now we're pretty much sitting level. Now I need to take it down another, I don't know, millimeter or so to get it exactly where I like it.
by the time you're done, when you set your plywood on, it's going to be a sixteenth of an inch below this point right here. Or approximately, give or take a little bit. I've done this enough times that I kind of know how, how to get the depth. And you keep repeating the process until you have your depth correct. And you don't have to just keep cutting it. It's kind of easy to do. You just kind of rake your blade. Just drag it on the surface of the foam. And you take out like uh, one bead depth at a time. Works pretty well. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get uh, my vacuum cleaner here and clean up this mess. Return in a moment. Alright, all cleaned up. Drop it in there. Just a hair below the level. Just a little bit. Need to go down just a bit more. And now I just repeat the process until you get the right depth. I think I'm going to leave it right there. Well, that looks pretty good. And you can see that there's a, a little bit of depth right there. So, uh, next step, we're going to fit the retract into this block. So, I'm going to take this over to my jigsaw. I'm going to cut out all of this area that's hatched that has hash marks on it, cut that out. These little notches. I'll put in another set of notches right in here for this bearing. That way she slides in without any any problems. So give me a second. I'm gonna go to the, my jigsaw cutter out. I'll be back. There's the plywood piece. It's all cut out. Here's the retract, slides right in. Not much slop there, but not too bad. I still have to drill out the holes, and I'm going to put blind nuts on the back side. I know a lot of guys like to use wood screws, but I like using uh, machine screws with uh, blind nuts on the back. All right, next up, put this back in the hole. And you need now to cut the depth of the retract into this foam. Which isn't that hard. You just take your knife and cut down there. The approximate depth, what I like doing is something like this. Get an idea how deep you have to go. And I'll either put a felt pen or a piece of tape across this mark so I know the depth. So let me set up my knife and we'll get chopping. First thing we need to do is figure out where the back of it is. So what I like doing is one of these numbers. Now go to the depth of the tape and just 
kind of draw the knife to one side or the other, whichever way I'm going. And I'll go through it twice. Make sure I get a fairly decent cut. You don't need to uh, really cut out the notches for the nuts and screws and stuff. Not yet at least. And now the sides, which really you could use the width of the landing gear block cutout to do this. And it will come out okay. If you go a little deeper, it's not a big deal. One more time, make sure I'm at the correct depth. Then across the front, this is kind of an eyeball thing. See where the front of the block is? Go straight down from there. And go straight to the other side. If you go a little deeper than you want to, that's okay. As long as you don't go out the top of the wing. Now, take the tape off. And I'm going to cut on an angle, like an X, to get this out. There's that side. The other side and that leaves you a little bump in the in the center and you see that bump now you go back to what you did before and just kind of chisel it out what I like doing is cutting across it and then start breaking it out Doesn't have to be perfect because no one's going to see this spot. All right, now I'm going to clean this out so I can see what I have. Well, the depth looks pretty close. You can see I'm in there, I don't know, a little more than a half an inch. Maybe not quite deep enough, but. We'll put the plate back in and we'll set the landing gear on top of that. And what you're going to find is you need to cut out a little bit in the center for this. So what I like doing is I'll take a piece of uh, plywood like that and lay it alongside the, the edge of the aluminum housing on the retract and try to make a parallel line towards this end. It doesn't have to go all the way. I'm only going to go maybe about to here, somewhere in here. And you line it up. Try to keep it as parallel as you can. Stick your knife in there, cut a groove because that's where your rod is going to travel anyways for your retract. Now you, you basically do the same thing. You ran your knife in here, you cut your slots, go across, exit out, dig it out. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I'll show you that when it's done. 
there you have it. You can see the groove for uh, that your clevis is going to ride in that connects to the retract. The retract hole itself, the cutout for the platform, and let me show you how all that's going to fit. Plate, you can see it's just underneath the balsa, about a sixteenth inch. It's just flush with the underside of the balsa. The retract sits down in there like that. The depth of this channel is the same depth as the retract. So that's taken care of. So what I need to do now is drill these four holes. I'll put that on drill press. I'll mark them with a pencil, drill press. Uh, put some blind nuts on the back side and screw it down. Then we're going to come back to this where we'll start to uh, cut the wheel well out. I finished drilling the holes. I pressed in the blind nuts on the back and around the edges. I don't know if you can see it or not. Uh, let's see if I can look in the monitor and see if I can get an angle here. Uh, you probably can't see it, but around around the blind nuts, I put some CA glue on it, a little bit over the top and all the way around the sides on each one. And that just keeps them from falling out later, just in case. So. What we have to do now is set this in here, glue it in with some, uh, I'm probably going to use 15 minute epoxy. And I'll show you how to keep the epoxy out of the, out of the, the blind nuts. We'll set that in permanently. So let me mix up some glue and prep this and we'll get on with it. Now this is what I do. I take the screws and I'll run them into the blind nuts like that and have them go through quite a ways. Well, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so. You do that on every one, all four of them. About like that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're sticking up a quarter inch, maybe a little more. What I do is use some petroleum jelly and I smear it on the threads and on the blind nut itself a little bit. And you do that to all four of them. Coat them very good, very evenly. And what it does is just makes a, a barrier for the epoxy so it don't stick. So the last thing you want is that epoxy to grab a hold of one of these screws. I guess you could use a little touch of oil or something too. I've never tried that. I used to take uh, little strips of paper and roll it up and wrap it around the screw and tape it, then glue the, the paper to the blind nut with some CA glue and then make my holes and then slide that in there. That works too. But I found this is a little easier. I don't have to mess around cutting little bits of paper. And I never had a problem doing it this way. Last time I did this, the plane lasted me whew, over 10 years before it started to fall apart. But it wasn't because of the screws. <laughs> because of oil seepage and doing things with the plane I really shouldn't have done. Okay, I'm just going to kind of pat it down with my fingers, get the excess, 
level. Like that. Mix up my five minute. I've already got one load on here. I, it, it's quite a bit actually. Look at that. Oh, let's see, stir stick of some kind. This one worked good, it has a flat edge, I can smear it better. Just using this old can of cashew top. <laughs> I was gonna use it for holding screws and stuff, but not this time. Comes in more handy this time as a surface for mixing epoxy. And I'm putting it up on the sides, along the bottom. You can be a little bit uh, heavy with the epoxy here. Try not to get it down your screw holes like I just did. That's that's something you don't want to do. Smear it around. And when you mix a lot of epoxy like this, it tends to set up quicker, so you might want to go a little faster than you normally would if you're mixing a little bit compared to a little bit. The idea is to fill the nooks and crannies so it lays level across the foam and when you do that then you know that you have enough that you're going to get a good bond okay now I'll put some on the plywood itself Staying kind of away from the blind nuts, coming up to the edge of it, but not real heavy. Not doing the edges of it yet, I will. I like putting a good coating on everything, that way it fuel proofs it at the same time. Okay, now for the edges. And I can feel it starting to set up, so I'm going to have to go a little faster. Just a little bit faster. Coating all my edges. Get that little piece of foam off of there. You don't need to get any on the top, because if you do, then your trim balsa that you put on may not fit right. Okay, that's quite a bit of epoxy. Stick this guy down in the hole. And you're gonna have epoxy oozing up and down around, so you wanna clean that up. So I have a paper towel here clean my stir stick off and I'll push the epoxy back down into the cracks and clean it up off the edges about like that and anywhere you see it goop up just kind of smear it get it out of your way doesn't matter if it's on the styrofoam or not because that's really where you want it. Scrape up any excess. What I like to do, let me grab it here. 
I'll get my denatured alcohol out. Smear a little bit on a on a paper towel. And then I'll go inside the edge here and just wipe it off. And that gets rid of, rid of any of the excess bumps and lumps and things you don't want. I got a lot of that. Get that another push down. That looks really good. I can see my cracks are all filled. Not a whole lot dripping out. I'll let you take a look at it. There it is. So we'll let that sit for a little while. When it starts to set up, I'll back the screws out. And then uh, set the retrack in there and we'll get ready to cut the wheel well. Be back in a few. It's been about 24 hours and it's very dry. The plate's very dry now. And the thing we need to find out is if the screws will come out. So take my screwdriver, oh yeah. No glue on that screw. We'll check the other ones real quick. That one's good, that one's good. That one's a little tight, not bad. Good. We will set the landing gear into the slot now. Sits in there just about right. This is an old beat up landing gear so it doesn't sit perfectly and it doesn't really matter but once I get the screws in it should be alright. And we need to screw this down and put it in place. down with the screwdriver. I don't have any uh, Allen head, cap head type screws handy so I'm just using these standard straight bladed screws that are not very good. Use these just for now until I get the, the good ones. These are 440s. There we go, one more to go. It's like that. Next up, we need to make the wheel well. So what I do is I lay my wheel well, or my wheel down where I want my well approximately to go. And what I'm going to do is basically cut where the wheel is, just a little bit of it at a time. I'll just follow the wheel. Like that. Then I'll take my knife, go 90 degrees straight up and down. And just cut the foam away. Do one side and I'll do the other. Like so, and cut it straight across. And what I'm doing is just making it so the wheel will go down inside the foam. And cut that away. I'm not going super deep, but I'm going deep enough that the wheel will start to set in. One more. Give you an idea of what I'm doing.
like that. And each time I do this, the wheel's going to sit a little further in, a little further in. It's not going to be the, the final size by any means. But it'll be very close, and then I'll show you a little cheating way that I make my final circle for the wheel well. Do this side. Try to do this as fast as I can because it's college football day and I'm going to take a little time and watch a few games. Okay. See it's just just starting to to fit into the into the wing. Take off a little more. This one I'm just going to go around. It's probably going to have to be cut out bigger. I'm making it just a little undersized, but I like doing things a little at a time. Ooh, it's getting a little tough now. This initial hole doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be the size that you, approximately the size that you want. And then you just trim it in to make it fit. Getting closer. Something don't look right here, and I don't know what it is. For some reason, this looks closer than this. So I'm going to do a little more measuring here to find out what's going on. See if it's my landing gear length or what. Be back in a minute. It's been way longer than a minute. It's been like uh, <laughs> a day. What happened... When I was cutting out the well, I noticed that, I don't know how I didn't notice it before, but I didn't have my plate at the same distance out from the center line as this one. So I had to rip that plate out and the glue was solid as a rock. It was no fun, but I got it moved. It had to be moved, oh, <laughs> uh, let's see, five eighths of an inch. That was a major, Major screw up on my part, uh, rushing to get things done, not measuring twice. I can just hear my old man right now just laughing his head off. So, uh, <laughs> when you make a mistake like that, you just gotta roll with it. Don't get mad, learn from it, laugh at yourself, <laughs> and keep going because there ain't much else you can do. Then just fix your problem. And that's all it is. I just popped it out, moved it over, did the same thing as I showed you, cut it all out, glued it all in. I had to glue in some scrap on this side. Let me tip it up so you can see. You can see my, my major mistakes here. I had to put back the foam I took out right through here. That's one of the advantages of taking it out in chunks because you can put it back in. And it's all uh, 15 minute epoxy in there. It's not going to hurt the strength of the wing any. It's, it's very solid. So we are back to the point of notching this out. As you can see, I got the wheel well cut out and you've seen me go around it and chisel it out. And it's basically the same as the rest of the wheel. I did half and I finished the other half already but that that's it's all basic and once you get to the right depth your wheel will go down it'll be kind of tight which is not a big deal and what I did is I took a piece of cardboard and a circle cutter 
like that. You can use anything you want to draw a circle and cut it out. Um, there's another way to do it. It's right here. And I've done this before. You can take a spray can top, if you can find the right size that will fit your wheel, like that. Take out this little center ring, just grab it with a pair of pliers and snap it loose. Make your hole the size of this cap, and slide that whole thing in and glue it in and then it, you have an instant wheel well. I've done that numbers of times. It works really good. They last a long time. But I'm going to show you how to do it the long way. And that is to cut out a cardboard template. Lay it on your hole. Well, put the wheel in like this. Then lay it in. Put that thing in your hole. And then center the, the circle up with your wheel. Now, uh, there is a thing that I do for retract uh, wheels that kind of uh, offsets the problem of when you come in for a hard landing, you know how the wheels sometimes will bend back maybe you don't know but you hit hard your landing gear will bend back a little bit or if you're on rough surfaces it might bend your gear back and when you go to retract your wheel they hang up something like that but if you make the wheel well a little bit bigger then you have to and then, then the size of the wheel you won't have that problem and if you make the hole big enough which this one is really big compared to uh, well let me tip it up I'm gonna set this in here and tip it up you can see how much larger it is than the wheel can you see the space around it uh, you can see a little bit around in here but what I do is open it up just enough that it's missing the front side of the wheel well the tire so it falls in there natural when it's in its normal position. Maybe give it a sixteenth uh, or up to an eighth of an inch of clearance. And that gives you, oh, I would say five sixteenths, maybe more of area behind the wheel back in here where the wheel can get, the, the strut can be bent, but it'll still go in. And it won't mess up your flight. You won't have to jiggle your gear around. It gives you that much more flexibility. And it's a sport plane, so it, it doesn't matter how far off it really is. But that's what I do. Some guys even make them in egg shape. Their uh, landing gear tire wells. They'll make it in egg shape so they have the same, uh, same effect and they'll have less at the top and less at the bottom for a wheel but I like going oversized round just in case I fly off a grass field I can change out my tire and go to a slightly bigger tire without having to uh, redo my wheel wells so that's something to consider now what I do is getting back to the subject I put my wheel down I find where I want my my template to sit where it would look the best uh, and how it will clear the best and I already have it marked and I take a sharpie you can use a pencil or a pen go around the inside of your template and then you're left with a circle I hope you can see that with this black line going around here that will be your finished cut line this is where you're going to take your knife and go around it cut the well the well out and make it as deep as you need to make it so that when the wheel goes down it's not going to hit this rod it can actually you can take this all the way to the top skin if you want and by the time you're done you're going to be very close to the top skin so it doesn't matter if you go that deep so let me get on to it and find a good sharp knife and I'm going to start cutting this guy out. And you see me do this already with uh, cutting out the center part. It's no different. 
and I'm going to cut right on the black line. Try to cut with the grain that way it'll be a little easier to control my knife. As you can see, same thing. Go around it, cut it out. I'll be back when I'm done cutting the circle. There it is. You get it kind of straight on. The wheel well is pretty much ground out. It's not quite to the upper skin, but close. Wheel drops in there just right. And they look fairly even. I don't know. It's hard to tell with this camera angle. It's kind of funky. But that's it. It's only a sport plane. It doesn't have to be perfect. Not, now, if it was a scale model, I'd have been right up a tree with it. I would have just went ballistic <laughs> but it's only a sport model so no harm now I believe um, the wheel well lining will be the next to go in which will be this chunk of mylar right here and you can see it'll lay in there just about right You can see it comes a little higher than the hole, which is good. It means I can trim it off. And you can use five minute epoxy, uh, foam CAs I think might work on this Mylar. Even aliphatic glue, aliphatic resin, tight bond or something like that. So I'm going to uh, cut this and show you a little bit of that real quick. Oh, let's find a good chunk of this. It's fairly square, not too dirty or wrinkly or crunchy. Yeah, that's pretty good, I suppose. Doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is lay it in here. Get a rough measurement of how much I need. I'm going to overlap towards the center of the landing gear pushrod hole. Just a little bit. Okay, that's quite a bit. There and about, I would say in here somewhere. Kind of hard to do this upside down. Won't need that. Set this guy in there. And that's the wheel well. Another, another thing I have to prepare is the bottom of the wheel well. I like mine to be smooth. You don't have to put a bottom into it or a top in this case. Uh, I just do it to have a smooth surface when my rod runs across it for moving the retract. It won't get snagged up on a little bump or something. It'll run across a smooth balsa. And this will be covered with a, I don't know, maybe a, a 0.6 ounce uh, fiberglass cloth perhaps or just uh, a light smearing of epoxy or something along those lines well I'm going to glue the bottom in first then I'll set the sides in on top of that and I will show you how I cut this guy out I believe this is still set to the correct size it looks pretty close. All right, let me get situated and then I'll show you how I do this. This portion of the video is running a little bit longer than anticipated. Uh, so I'm going to make another video. It's probably gonna be three parts just on the retracks. Um, the next video is going to be the wheel well liner, the top piece that goes inside the wheel well, the little piece of circular balsa, the piece of balsa or plywood that goes underneath the strut, this little portion of balsa wood right here, the mounts for the screws to hold in the plate, that'll be on the next one, and uh, after that, if there's time, we'll dig out the servo well and 
run the the rods and get these functioning before we head on to the nose gear re retract. So it looks like uh, possibly three, maybe four on the retracts. So I'm going to wrap it up right here and I'll see you on the next video. Between now and then, have a good one.